Welcome to Electra Online and now we're going to take a look at Faraday's Law and Differential Form again but in this case we're going to compare this format to what the curl actually is in a mathematical sense. So again to tune us into what we were doing let's say we have a magnetic field, a B field, that's directed in the upward direction in the positive Z direction if that B field changes, only during the time that it changes, an electric field will exist around the B field. If the B field is increasing, then the uh, electric field will be such a way that it's oriented in this direction. If the B field is de decreasing, it will be in the direction that I showed you right here. And also, of course, if you put a conductor there, there will be a current associated with that electric field. And that's what we call Faraday's Law. But going back to the description here of uh, the fourth equation of Maxwell, uh, which represents Faraday's law, we have the curl of the electric field is equal to the negative of the change of the B field with respect to time. What that means is the curl of E can be defined as the circulation divided by the area, and of course the circulation can be defined as the strength of the electric field at that point, and yes, the strength of the electric field will be the same all the way around that circular path if the B field is uniformly distributed throughout that circle times the length of the path, 2 pi times r, divided by the area inscribed by that path, which is pi r squared. And that will be equal to the negative of the change of the B field with respect to time. And let me just write down that as a magnitude only, so I'm going to drop out of the arrow. So to simply say we're talking about the magnitude of the electric field will be equal to that. Simplifying things, the pi's cancel out and one of the r's cancel out with that r, and so we can then say that the electric field is equal to the negative change of the B field with respect to time times r divided by 2, and I bring the 2 and the r over to the other side of the equation, and that's not a very good looking 2. There we go, much better. All right. Now, to simplify things, let's replace this change of B field with respect to time by just a constant, let's call it C, assuming that that is changing at a constant rate. So we can then say that E is equal to minus C times R over 2, uh, where C simply represents the change of the B field with respect to time, and the negative is still there. All right, now we should be able to take the curl of the electric field, and knowing the electric field is equal to this, so let me circle that, and we should get the same results. All right, now first of all, we should realize, and where's my red pen? Right here. We should realize that the electric field in the R direction, the radial direction, is zero, and the electric field in the Z direction is zero as well. So it could go, this is equal to zero, and this is equal to zero. And then the electric field, uh, let's say that the little r is equal to the big R, because I want to find the electric field at that location. I'm then going to multiply A theta, because what we can say here is that the electric field is directed in the theta direction, like that. So that would be a theta component of the electric field only, and that goes in here, and of course we multiply the r by that r, and we get, uh, this would then be replaced by uh, minus c r squared over 2. So notice I get, if I multiply this times r, I get minus c r squared over 2, and that's what this term becomes right there. And now we can go ahead and take the curl of that, if we take the curl, this is equal to uh, 1 over r times the r unit vector times this times this minus this times this. And we're not really multiplying here, we're taking the partial derivative of that. So the partial derivative of theta uh, with respect to theta of 0, because we take the partial derivative of this, minus the partial derivative with respect to z of the quantity minus c r squared over 2. Now, of course, since it's with respect to z, and there's no z in there, that's simply a constant then with respect to z, so that will be 0 when we take the partial derivative. Minus, we alternate signs, plus, minus, plus, so we'll go minus the theta unit vector times the partial derivative of r with respect to 0, minus the partial derivative with respect to z of, so the partial derivative with respect to z of 0. I didn't think I said that right in the, the first one there, but that's all right. Going on to the next one, so it'd be plus 1 over r, and I'll write big R because here we're considering doing a big R, uh, times the z unit vector, times the partial derivative of r with respect to this, so the partial derivative of r, and I'm mixing my r's, aren't I? Hmm, not a good idea. Maybe I'll just make them all small r's, just so I don't confuse anybody. Uh, so make them all small r's. 
And so the partial derivative, so I take this times the partial derivative of R with respect to um, right here, hmm. minus C R squared over two minus the partial derivative with respect to theta of zero. Okay, so that's taking the curl of the electric field vector, and the electric field vector, of course, is circular around this path, which means it only has a theta component, it does have a radial component, it does not have a z component. So right away we can see that all these go to zero. That's zero. This has to be zero because it's a partial derivative with respect to z of, a, of c times r. They're, they're both constant with respect to z, so that goes to zero. These are obviously zero. And this one is zero. In other words, we only have one surviving term, which is right here. Okay, what is the partial derivative with respect to r of r squared? Well, that would be 2r. So what this then becomes equal to, this is equal to 1 over r times z times, let's pull out the minus c over 2, so minus c over 2 times the partial derivative with respect to r of r squared, which is 2r. All right, so now we can simplify that. Notice that the 2's cancel out, the r's cancel out, and I'm left with, this is equal to minus c in the z direction. And remember what we were doing here, we were taking the curl of e, and the curl v is this right here. So, we can now say, in conclusion, the curl of e, if we go through the process of actually taking the curl, is equal to minus c in the z direction. And remember what c was, c was that constant that replaced the, the change of the b field with respect to time, so we can place that in there, and so we can say that the curl of e is therefore equal to minus the change of the b field with respect to time, in the z direction. And that's of course true because the b field is in the z direction. This unit vector in the z direction really replaces the air on top of the b field. The b field is of course directed in the z direction, either positive or negative z direction. If it's, direct in the, if it's changing in the positive z direction, the negative of course will turn it around, but it turns out the, um, the electric field. Now, what that means is take a look at this and take a look at that. That is the exact same thing. So what we just showed you here, that if you take the curl of E, you get the very same result as if you take the definition of the curls being the circulation divided by the area. Very same result. And that shows you how to take the curl of a changing magnetic field, or I should say how to take the curl of an electric field caused by a changing magnetic field, which in essence is the fourth equation of Maxwell which represents Faraday's law in differential format.